Hello everybody, welcome back to IELTS Master. This is video number 12 and we will continue to discover the skill of listening. In the previous video, we were talking about how to predict from a table and how you can fill in the blinds of the table with what you predicted and what you listened to. Today, we are going to focus on another skill and the topic of the listening will be about history. As you can see in the picture, the value of history. History is important. However, when we think about the term history, there can be more than just about the past. When you listen to the recording today, you're going to see that history can also be about the present time and can also be about the future time. Amazing, isn't it? All right. Now, in terms of contents today, we're going to cover three points, the signpost phrases, sentence completion, and then we'll do some classification exercise. So first, let's take a look at the signpost phrases. What's a signpost phrase anyway? Now, in order to understand what a signpost phrase is, we need to understand what a signpost is. Imagine you're walking to the street, right? You're standing in the corner and you want to know which way to go next. You look at the signpost. The signpost says first street. So the first street is going to be this way. The signpost says Fifth Avenue, then the Fifth Avenue is going to be this way. Then the signpost is basically a way to help you traveling on the street. Now, signpost phrases in speech are phrases that will guide the listeners throughout the recording. And in reading, we also have signpost phrases to guide the readers over the passage. Signpost phrases. You have here uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sentences from A to G. I want you to put them in the correct order. Which one appears first? Which one appears next? All right. We're going to have 30 seconds to do this. Go. Have you finished? Now let's take a look at the answer. It's actually very simple. This is, this is like a basic warm-up for you to do. Of course, we will start with the first one, right? Like, I'd like to begin by giving three reasons. So this is going to be the first thing that a speaker will say in a listening recording. And then, firstly, the first reason. And then, the second reason. Uh, we can do better, we can participate better, understand history, and by the way, now by the way is used to add more idea to a, a general idea. First is a big idea, second is a big idea, and then by the way is used to add a little idea to a previously big idea mentioned. After by the way, we're gonna have what? Anyway, something, our participation, if you have even more ideas to add in, alright? And then we're going to take a look at the last idea, finally, and F to sum up. Okay, so I'd like to begin with first, second, and finally, and to sum up, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Those are the signpost phrases. And remember, whenever you hear a signpost phrase, that means a new idea is going to be introduced. And you got to pay attention when you are listening to a piece of recording. Now, we are going to do the first listening exercise. This is the form of sentence completion. Read the task. Complete the sentences below with no more than one word, an, or a number. Remember, no more than one word. You can fill in with one unit only. It's either a word or a number. That's the point. But before we listen, always take a look at the questions, right? Therefore, number one, we're going to have the handout covers, general, topics. What do you think is going to fit in here? Well, uh, maybe it's a number. It covers how many topics. That could be one. The second one, as well as students of history, there are students of blah, blah, blah at the lecture. So the word that you put in here must be another subject. Isn't that, isn't that correct? History and another subject. Number three, the lecturer's own motivation history is that he finds it. Well, when you see uh, the verb find here, it doesn't mean to look for something. 
but it means he feels that history is blah blah blah. Okay, now we are going to practice listening. You're gonna listen and find the answer to number one, two, and three. Here we go. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to begin this term's lectures with a discussion of the various subdisciplines in history. Before I do that, though, can I refer you to the handout you picked up on the way in? It deals with two general topics. The first is why study history, and the second is what is history. Neither of these questions has an easy answer. In fact, people have been asking these questions for as long as history has been studied. However, as you are mostly new students to this subject, and we have some students of economics with us also, I feel you should have some background to these basic questions. Anyway, it's all in the handout. I might add that for me personally, the most important reason for studying history is that I find it exciting. Our ancestors can remain, if we want them to, a mystery, a closed book, a blackness that we never see into, or we can come to know what motivated them and discover how that led to the world we live in today. All right, then we have just did a very short sentence completion exercise. And you can see that after we've made some prediction about the uh, information that is necessary for each of the blind, it's really very much easier for us to follow. But also, you need to practice a lot because the listening takes place only one time. That's the point. Now, we are going to look at another type of exercise which is called classification. Here, read the task. How does the lecturer describe each kind of history? Each kind of history. Now, kinds of history. History is divided into different types. Oh, really? T, a traditional type of history. M, a modern type of history. Or F, a type of history that looks to the future. So T traditional, M modern or T future, that's it. And here, write the correct letter T, V or F next to questions 4 to 10. We have uh, a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 types of histories all together. And you gotta decide whether they are T, M or F. We got political, postmodern, feminist, social, economic, military and ethnic. Maybe you don't understand all of these words, but don't worry. You don't have to understand all of them. You just have to listen carefully when they appear. And now we're going to practice listening. Pay attention to the signpost phrases. We will try to find the answer to the questions. All right. Now, here we go. You who have chosen to pursue the study of history are very fortunate. This is a time when we can talk not just about history, but histories. Traditionally, history was seen as one subject, and the subject matter was clear. It was about kings and queens and wars. Additionally, it was about states and empires, or groups of states. This is what we now call political history. The subtopics were the parts of the world, for example, the history of China or of France. History has moved on somewhat, and we can learn a lot about current views of history by looking at the proposed lecture topics in our leading universities. In fact, you'll see that even the simplest definition of history, that it is about what happened in the past, is up for grabs. Some of the more, how shall I put it, progressive areas of study are as much about what should happen in the future. One example of this is the field of postmodern history. Likewise, feminist history looks at the past to make sure the future will be different, and it uses the past to assist in its efforts to make the future as it wants it to be. Somewhere in the middle of these two extremes lie a range of areas of study which have developed over the modern period, replacing the traditional idea of political history. These are by now mostly well established. You can study social history or economic history. Social history asks about the ordinary people and their lives, not just their daily lives, but their contribution to changes in our society. Ordinary people have desires and wishes which they try to put into effect, 
And this has a massive effect on social development, which was not fully understood in the traditional study of history. By the way, one area of traditional history which I forgot to mention, but which has had a resurgence of interest in recent years, is the area of military history. This was, of course, a great practical use in more violent times, and unfortunately has become of increasing use and interest academically and practically in our own times. Ethnic and multicultural history are further examples of kinds of history which, like social history, differ from the traditional forms. Ethnic history is a modern concern which concentrates on the value systems and beliefs of a people. All right, so we have done another example of exercise that looks at the uh, classification. All right, what you were, uh, what you had to do was to take a look at all of the types of history and then find the right category for them. Now, sometimes the speaker go off the track. He was talking about traditional, and then he talks about future, and then the modern time, and then he goes back to the traditional. You have to look at the signpost phrase in order to find out the best answer for each case. So in this short video, we have discussed signpost phrases like first, I'd like to begin with and to sum up sentence completion exercise with more than one word and or a number. And finally, classification of uh, items of questions. Very simple on that. Thank you very much for joining me with this video. The topic was the value of history. I want you to review this video and do more exercises that follow this and in order to enhance your ability to deal with classification and sentence completion task types. I will see you in the next video, video number 30. We will continue to discover the skill of listening.